Hello everyone, it's Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything and welcome back to another episode of Voices from the Shadow Realm, the podcast where I interview different Yu-Gi-Oh! voice actors about their experiences voicing and bringing the characters that we all know and love to life. This is episode two and I am so honored and privileged to have the great Emily Kramer on. Uh, Emily, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. How are you doing today? Hello, everyone. It's my pleasure. I'm doing great today, Dylan. I'm so excited to be here. Yes, well, I'm very excited to have you. Um, Emily, you're obviously most well known for voicing Sky Zizen uh, in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains English dub. And so if you want to just kind of introduce yourself, I know that's not the only character that you voiced. Uh, if you want to kind of introduce yourself, promote yourself a little bit, that would be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm Emily Kramer. I am a voice actor. I've been doing it since about 20, 2017 for the first time ever, but 2018 was when I started Blue Angel. That was my first, my Sky's Eyes and Blue Angel, my first uh, regular role ever was on Yu-Gi-Oh! So it's, ve it's very special, very exciting to be here talking about it. Uh, I came from a stage background, a long uh, Broadway background. Um, I was actually still doing Broadway shows when I was recording Vrains. So, um, yeah, I came from, you know, musical theater, long touring, long Broadway uh, stint. And then I just uh, realized I was super, super interested in voiceover and I had always had such a huge love for it. So I very purposefully, purposefully started figuring out how I could start doing it. And I was very fortunate to be able to begin. Um, yeah, so I'm a voice actor now. I work, you know, remotely in person on all kinds of different things. If you're interested in seeing my stuff, my website is emilykramer.com. My, all my socials are emilykramerva. And if you, I, we're doing, um, I just started doing a lot of conventions and uh, appearances and stuff like that. I have all my events listed on my website, but if you can't make it out to any of my appearances, I do have a streamily live stream autograph signing coming up this Thursday. Wow, it's sneaking up. This Thursday, August 10th, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, it's going to be on Instagram Live. So you can come hang out, uh, get some stuff signed. I have I have tons of art prints. I have my Pikachu Funko Pops from Pokemon. I have a bunch of Pokemon cards as well. So if you're not, not able to make it to an, an in-person event, it's August 10th, 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Instagram Live. Yeah, thank you so much, Emily, and I'll have that yeah. linked down below. Highly encourage you to check that out. Um, also, like, Aoi Zizen and all of her forms, Blue Angel, Blue Girl, Blue Maiden, can get signed prints as well. So, um, yeah, awesome Absolutely. awesome stuff on your shop. I've definitely checked it out, and I'll have cool. it linked in the description. Uh, so, Emily, I want to just kind of start by asking, um, how was your personal experience voicing Sky? Uh, did you feel like she was kind of an easy character to play? Did you feel like you related to her? What was that whole experience? like oh my gosh absolutely I was well first of all I was just so thrilled to have a regular role on an animated series because I had been taking class learning about it trying to figure out how to start doing it and I was just so so excited to be a regular on a series um, that I had known about growing up I was I didn't play Yu-Gi-Oh growing up but I was very aware of it you know friends of mine were in love with it and so it was so cool to get that role and then go to some of those old friends and be like, hey, you're never going to believe this. Guess what I'm going to start <laughs> doing pretty soon. Um, so that was really, really special. And the thing I really loved was really the duality of her character because obviously in the real world she's one way and you link into the brains for a reason so you can be you know who you dream about being and that she as a character dreams about being this confident bubbly happy uh duelist and she's given that opportunity to kind of just become her superhero self so i just thought that was such a cool um first of all a cool premise for the show but such a cool duality to that character because I think we all feel that's a very relatable, um, yeah. very relatable thing for a lot of people. We we are who we are uh, in our real lives, but then we also have dreams about who we could be or who we want to be. So um, that was just such a a really fun. I would say challenge, but it it was just too enjoyable to even feel like a challenge. It was just, you know, um, just a ton of fun to get to play both of those sides because I think it's very relatable. Yeah. And also, I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a trained singer, so <laughs> where I kick into the high high Blue Angel stuff, 
that is also a lot of fun for me because I know I sound, this is how I sound in the real world, but when I get to kick into that register of my voice, it's a lot of fun. Um, and it's also somewhere that like, you know, I did a lot of stuff, a lot of uh, musical theater stage stuff using that register. So I'm pretty comfortable with it. And it's, uh, it's you're much safer when you, when you are trained, when you know how to use your voice safely. Um, so that was just like a super fun bonus thing I got to do pretty much all the time for that character. I love that side. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, I think she was always someone who reminded me a lot about like social media, right? Oh, yeah. You know, social media is like a highlight reel. And then in the real life and the real world, it's usually not yeah. as good as people make it seem. Um, mm -hmm. And I felt like Aoi's character, as you just perfectly explained, really highlighted that. And um, seeing how we're hearing about how easily you were able to just kind of dig into that is really cool. It just, yeah, I enjoyed it so much. It was so much fun. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so another question I had, and I, I think I'm actually wrong about this because we talked about it. We talked about it pre-recording, but <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. still going to ask it. Um, I thought that Sky Zizen was your first role in Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, and I just wanted to kind of know how that ended up happening and like what kind of brought you to Yu-Gi-Oh! and the voice acting um, sphere that Yu-Gi-Oh! is. Um, but Sky Zizen is not your first role. Uh, so the question still remains, like, how did you kind of get into <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! And then you can, of course, correct me on that because clearly I'm, I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. So um, this actually might relate to another question we have coming down the line. I've seen the list of questions. <laughs> um, so how I got into the voice acting sphere, I will nutshell it. I was I was in it was in 2014. I was performing in the 2014 Broadway revival of Les, Les Miserables. And I happened upon the documentary. I know that voice made by John DiMaggio, voice of Bender, voice of Jake the Dog in Adventure Time. Hmm. Um I happened upon it. I think it was on Netflix at the time or something. It's it's out there now. It's on a, a different platform. I think maybe YouTube. But it was a, a documentary made in 2013. And I watched the whole thing front to back like a, a couple of times because it was hitting me like a ton of bricks because obviously I was an actor. Obviously, I'd been doing it for a very long time. Um, but it was just the documentary explained voice acting in a very uh, specific, categorical, like kind of career oriented way in just a way I'd, I'd never seen before. And something in my brain just fired off. I was like, oh, my gosh, I really want to do that because I've always been a fan of animation, all kinds of different things. Um, but I had never thought about it as uh, work that I could have or that I could get into. So I, after I saw that documentary, I was just like, all right. How do I do it? So um, <laughs> contacted my very good buddy, Mike Licio, who was in a show a couple of blocks away from me. He was in Avenue Q at the time, and I knew he had done a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon. And so I just I, I hit him up and I was like, dude, you do so much of this stuff. How did you start? I mean, as we all ask, you know, everybody asks each other, how did you do it? How did you do it? And everybody's right. journey into it is completely different. No mm -hmm. one's is the same. But I, I asked Licio and I said, how did you get into that? And he said, take this class. Um, this is going to be Darren Dunstan, our wonderful director. Um, and he also cast the show and he also teaches. I don't know if he's still teaching it right now. He's pretty busy right now, so he may not be teaching the class. But at the time, he was teaching classes, and Leisha said, um, "You know, he'll he'll he's great in class. He'll audition you from class, and he could, he could be casting you on the show from from class." So I was like, "Okay, if I'm going to take a class, if I'm going to invest my money, I'm very glad I know it will be with this person who is going to teach me exactly what they're going to want on the show." So I took Darren's class. I absolutely loved it we got to have some experience of dubbing in the class which was which i hadn't never done in a booth before it was extremely right. useful extremely educational so um yeah i just went and did my best in the class and was so happy to meet darren he's the the best guy ever <laughs> he um is. He is. <laughs> and um yeah i was just very fortunate to you know he started sending me some auditions uh from after we finished, after I think it was about like three week class, we wrapped up that class and he started sending me some auditions and eventually something did stick. Wow. And that was a character in arc five, correct? Yes. Yeah. That I was going to say it leads into our next point, which is, <laughs> is that Blue Angel was not my first role on Yu-Gi-Oh! I actually played Guardian Diana in arc five, which was um, a, one, a single episode character where I think, you know, they, they, 
sometimes they'll bring us in to kind of, you know, see how we do in a single character session where it's not a long term commitment, you know, if they want to keep working with us. Um, so, right. yeah, I was Guardian Diana. I think, yeah, it was a it was a, a very, a very uh, elevated British accent. It was so fun <laughs> to get to put to get to put that even on top of my first ever in person in studio dubbing experience. That was incredibly fun. Um, and actually, Licio played the uh, there was a I was the female guardian. He was the um, counterpart male guardian and we were both dueling kind of at the same time so it was actually it's kind of a fun little easter egg like my friend who got me into the Yu-Gi-Oh family is actually in my first ever episode with me which is really nice um yeah but that was guardian diana on arc five was my very first ever single episode character yeah that that is awesome well thanks for sharing that and i'm actually gonna kind of i know i sent you i always you know we pre-write the question sometimes we go a little off the cusp i'm actually gonna throw a curveball at you because we're gonna go a okay. little out of order i feel like okay. a really good follow-up question um at this point you mentioned darren dunstan being able to um you know take the class with him um, i've heard so many stories from a lot of different voice actors just about how great of a person Darren is. I've had the honor of, of meeting Darren a couple of times at different conventions and just one of the nicest human beings you could ever possibly talk to and, and meet. So how was that experience like working under someone who is such an esteemed Yu-Gi-Oh! voice actor? He played Pegasus, obviously, If for those of you that don't know from the first Yu-Gi-Oh! series, and he's been um, I, the, vo the vocal director, I'm not sure the exact title, for a lot of the more recent spinoffs. Uh, so how was it working under him and, and having him as like a mentor almost? The best. Plain yeah. and simple, just, just the best. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. He's, he's <laughs> just so much fun. He's so supportive. He's so creative. Um, and he's so understanding that like some of those cues are like are a mouthful and it's you know it's a tongue twister sometimes and so sometimes it, you know I'm I'm not a wizard I can't get everything off the first uh, the first take every time but um, <laughs> he's so he's super super patient super understanding like you know really makes it um, makes it an incredibly fun process incredibly supportive process but when you do hit a cue that's really challenging, the most patient, the most understanding, the most wonderful, and within being all those things, still the most creative and most fun. Um, and so he's he's just one of my favorite people in the whole world to work with. We love Darren. Yeah, for nothing nothing but great things about him. And uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, the, the way that he brought Pegasus to life in that first Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh. show is still, to this day, I, in my opinion, it's one of the best <laughs> dubbed characters of all time. Oh. I, I mean... Easily. He's, he's Without fantastic. Without a doubt. Yeah, he's fantastic. <laughs> um, so to, to bring it back to um, to Sky's eyes and your experiences kind of playing her, I felt like she was kind of a unique character to voice because she had three distinct versions of herself as she continued to grow throughout the story of Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns. She started as Blue Angel, she had a very short stint as Blue Girl, and then she ended up in her final transformation as Blue Maiden. So my question for you, um, what was your approach to voicing those changes, if there was like any different approach, or did you feel yeah. like you kind of used the same um, strategies to voice her as her character went through those transformations? Oh my gosh, absolutely. It absolutely changed. Um, and very mindfully so throughout the recording. And that, and that was another thing that Darren was very, uh, working with me very closely on, very carefully. And we're try we tried very hard to keep um, the three distinct um, phases of her character very, you know, clear and different from each other. So starting out, she was that like extremely high, bubbly, like, woohoo, sorry for everybody's ears, <laughs> high octane, high octave um, vo uh, voice type. And that really kind of, to me, reflected, you know, she, she'd gotten into this world. She was so happy to be a version of herself that she had really chosen. Um, and she was just having all the fun. And with that um with that kind of wild um that wild enthusiasm comes a certain amount of vulnerability as that that's mm -hmm. kind of like her earliest kind of youngest version of of what she chooses to be and you know she she goes through a lot and she loses a lot <laughs> yeah i i know um but there's a lot of vulnerability to that um c coupled with that enthusiasm which we always tried to kind of work in together and then when she hit 
Blue Girl, that was really fun because it was kind of like her, like obviously like tougher, cooler, a little bit more sarcastic. Mm-hmm. Like she's been through some things, she's seen some stuff. And um, we kind of just really worked on giving it, you know, a bit more of my bit more of my national national natural <laughs> register excuse me i'm a voice actor um, uh, but like working in a bit more of my own vocal sensibilities still obviously you know in the key of the character but you know she's she's got a little bit more um a little bit more grit to her which was really really fun because it was just a very uh significant departure from how it started and you know it i, I kind of i always kind of wish there was a little more time in that phase like you said it was it was shorter than the other two yeah um because it was really fun so that's kind of what we gave it there and then once she hit blue maiden it was just much more grounded it was more mature it was much more self-aware but not not in a self-conscious way in more of a way that she was self-realized and um yeah just more much more of that yeah fully realized yeah. final form um the uh steadiness that can kind of come with that yeah no that, that's really well said and one of the reasons i i wanted to ask that is because as i watched the through the brains dub i felt like there was a little bit of a switch with her character the way she spoke so uh, you did a really good job i think projecting that onto each version of herself you're welcome um so actually this is a question that that's kind of interesting because i know some voice actors play the game i'd imagine most probably don't but you have to be somewhat familiar with it to read all those effects and all the car and it's even as someone who does play pretty casually i mean it gets pretty pretty complicated uh so i know reading those effects (laughs) is probably really really tough um but a question that a lot of people in my community wanted me to ask you uh she is also a very unique character in the fact that she plays multiple decks throughout Mm -hmm. the show. That's not a very common thing that a lot of characters in the Yu-Gi-Oh! animes do. Uh, She played Trick Stars, and then she played Marincess. Uh, Did you have a personal favorite between the two? And was there one Uh, that you felt was maybe a little easier than the other to, like, voice act for and read the effects for? Yeah, there were... Um, well, the trick stars were just kind of fun. They were, they were honestly a little bit easy. The names were a little bit easier to read because you have trick star, Bella Madonna, trick star, Candina. It, something is flows for easier. me. Yeah. Yeah. flows a little <laughs> bit easier. Uh, Marincess, Co- Marincess Coral Anemone, like that, <laughs> say that a bunch of times Yeah, and fit I... it, fit it in the time space. So like it's, there were times, uh, there were definitely anemone cues that I had to work on a couple of times. Um, I mean. I guess Trickstar because it was easier to to read and kind of, you know, get through the cues. But I had, I also did, well, it was kind of after the dub, I guess. But I did get a lot of practice in, um, like, rush, like dual links and stuff like that. Um, I got a lot more practice with those different things. Um, so I hope I get to do them again as well in maybe a different game. But um, I don't know if I had a favorite. I did just love, all. I, I always just loved seeing what they were going to be. Cause like I'm, I'll look down the cues, I'll read things. I, and I like to start like getting, you know, words into, you know, my brain and my mouth before I actually perform them. Right. Um, so I used to, I used to just love like, you know, getting the names, getting them in my brain and then seeing what the thing looked like. Um, once I got to the queue and was going to be seeing it on the screen, that was always super fun for me. And they're, they're all beautiful. They're all really fun. Yeah. Yeah. She, she had a, she had cool decks and like the, yeah. it's, it's, I think it's one of the, funnest things as a fan too to see these like really big cool looking boss monsters summoned yeah. with the voice actor like calling out the summoning chants it's one of my mm-hmm. favorite parts of the show so yeah. uh, it's cool to hear that like voice actors or at least you had a lot of fun seeing what oh. they look like as well uh with your with your vocal cues so that that's awesome oh, black cat bat <laughs> black cat bat like that was so fun I, uh, I don't know why that one or sweet guitar like those ones were just so much fun so yeah you can picture me yeah. in the studio just like probably having a little too much fun i think you can hear it on some of those cues too when i just like <laughs> hit it so hard some of the but names are it. like so cool it feels so oh, epic saying them out loud so you know? fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that's awesome uh so there was a, a, a specific line that i feel like i have to ask you about <laughs> Um, I think you already know what this line is going to be because yeah. this, this like broke the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime community for a little bit. People really? were, people loved it. Oh, yeah. They were going crazy oh, over God. it. And that was the line um, 
where your character, Sky, is dueling Spectre, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. And Sky mm -hmm. makes the comment, I could so swipe left on you right now. Uh, yeah. So I, just, I have to ask. <laughs> I mean, the, the one thing that I always have loved about the Yu-Gi-Oh! dubs is they have a lot of really, like, just funny meme lines in them. And that's like a staple of the dubs, which is wonderful. How did yeah. that like Tinder dating app reference come to be? <laughs> was it just on the script? Did you have any creative input in it? Or were you just like, oh, all right, this is it. Let's just do it up. I don't think I can't, I can't take credit. I don't think I had that creative <laughs> input. Um, but if I had a guess, I would say that that may have come uh, influenced by an earlier episode. Because do you remember it was, I think, probably first season blue angel uh links it to the reins and she's looking for playmaker and there are people dual other duelists keep coming up in front of her and she is swiping on them do you remember that at all I, he's like hey blue angel you feel like dueling? Do oh me. Yes, like, yes, oh. yes 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 i think if i had a guess the script writer <laughs> may have consciously or subconsciously been calling back to something like that because i was like no 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 like just <laughs> You know, um, I was swiping in that episode. So if I had a guess, I would say it could be. That would make sense. That. Yeah. But it, that... I cannot take credit for that. What I can take credit for is I did get to play uh, Owie's robot, house robot. Yes. And you can tell it's me, but um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a chameleon. But you can... <laughs> it, that was really fun because I just got to do this like very robotic thing. Um, and what, I forget, I think it's Aoi gets home from school. Um, oh, it, the line was like, Mr. Zizen is still at work, but I made lasagna. And like, Darren was just like, whatever you made for dinner, go off. I was like, yeah, lasagna. <laughs> oh, so that one was improv. That was mine. <laughs> <laughs> there are other things throughout that I know I also, like, we worked together on, or we just maybe reworked a phrasing or something like that. But, um... Yeah, I can't take I can't take credit for that one, but I, I so funny. appreciate I appreciate the appreciation. Of no, it. Pe people loved it. I mean, it, it, that one was like all over Twitter and it was. Yeah, it was it was good. <laughs> you know, oh, I can so swipe left on you right now. It was uh, just yeah. the disgust. I mean, the delivery was just it was so good. It was, it yeah. was perfect. That one was especially fun because like Spectre, obviously, oh, I know God, that's Billy yeah. Bob and that's my friend. So, uh, I mean, I just. And he's one of the one of the best of us, honestly. Whenever I did have a duel with him, it was just extra super fun. Yeah, no, he he played that role very well. And then, of course, from yeah. the the show perspective, Howie and and Spectre obviously did not get along very much. So, uh, yeah, you, you could really <laughs> kind of show off your disgust in a very realistic. Yeah, manner. <laughs> it's so fun. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, I had to ask you about that. Um, of course. Of yeah. Course. So, uh, my final question here, um, just. You know, you, you've obviously had a role in Arc 5. It was a very minor role, got you into the franchise. You had a major role. I mean, you voiced one of the main girl leads of a Yu-Gi-Oh. I mean, I'd say that's a very, very major um, character role to play, which is awesome. I Thank think you, you did a very good job with it. Uh, so what are your... You're welcome. So what are your uh, just kind of overall thoughts here regarding the Yu-Gi-Oh anime? Do you, do you think it's something that you could see yourself maybe getting back into if the right role calls for it? Um, just what are your thoughts yeah. on the community and everything in general? Oh my gosh, absolutely. I can't wait to... I can't wait to see what's next. Um, I can't, I can't wait to get, uh, get on regularly again someday or even just bit parts. Like those are fun too. Um, I'm so, so happy to be a part of this community. Everybody, um, has been just so kind and just really, really, you know, complimentary or supportive. Um, it's, it's such a special thing. And I remember when they, they told me I was going to be doing Blue Angel. Uh, it was back in like January of 2018, I want to say. And it was really special because Darren let me know. He's like, this is, um, we, we'd like you to play this role. She's really the, like, the one of the, at the, at the time of the first season, like the female lead yeah. of this new arc of the franchise. And I just remember thinking to myself, like, oh my gosh, that's so special. Like, that is so, that is such an honor. And I just, I hope the community understands that I take it as such i take it as such an honor i i really cherish the fact that i i got to do it um and also i got to do it really brand new to doing anime at all dubbing at all voiceover at all it was my first ever regular role on any series yeah. so that coupled with just just what i know the significance of it is to so many people uh, i just wanted to let, let everybody know that it's just 
just so equally special to me. It's an honor. Now that was that was really well said, and, and I know a lot of people loved your performances as, as Sky. So um, I think the 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 love that you have for the community is right back at you. So thank um, you. You're very very welcome, um, Emily Kramer. It was great having you on. Uh, if you want to promote once again your um you know your Instagram live stream August 10th this Thursday night, you absolutely yeah. can. And then any any final thoughts would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. My my website is emilykramer.com. I'm Emily Kramer VA on all socials. And the live stream is this Thursday, August 10th, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, all my links are in my bio on Instagram. And otherwise, just thank you so much for having me on today, Dylan. I love your channel. I love like I just love the enthusiasm and just attention to detail uh, you, you put into <laughs> everything you do. Honestly, like you are such a favorite of all of us on the other side of it. So just know that you are you are appreciated and celebrated. And thank you so much for having me. Thank you. That really means the world. I really appreciate it, Emily. Uh, so this has been episode two of the B, uh, Voices from the Shadow Realm podcast starring Emily Kramer. I still get that name. I keep wanting to say Beyond the Shadow Realm. I don't know. I messed up the name with Daniel, too. I'll get the name of the podcast right. But what is more important than the name is the content. Emily, you were wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you all so much at home for watching here on YouTube or listening on Spotify or Apple Music, wherever you get your podcasts from. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you have an amazing day. Take care, guys.